Okay, welcome guys to the next uh, physics lesson and today we are going to be talking about the fundamental kinematics equations. So these equations are the basis of all kinematics um, problems and it's really important for you guys to know these equations by heart if you can. So kinematics equations and I'm going to introduce five of them to you. Um, and if you have done the AP exam, and you you probably know them by the big five equations, but anyway, um, now these it's important to note that there are many different variations of these equations, but the ba but the basics like the the basic overall format of these equations, um, what they mean should mean the same, but just that people might rearrange them a different way. So just to keep in mind, in case your teacher teaches you a different equation, and you might like, and you might be like, what? I've I've never learned this before, but it's basically just a different arrangement of these equations. Okay, so I'm going to start start off by recalling. So recall this equation equals change in d over change in time. So you guys are familiar with this equation. Um, speed of velocity equals change in displacement over time. And well, let's rearrange this to find. Um, we can rearrange this to find this, right? <clears throat> and note that this only this equation only works when velocity is constant. If there is an acceleration in this, this equation would not hold. So we can say that this is a, this is our very first kinematics equation, and this only works with a constant velocity. So only under certain circumstances can you use this equation. Our second equation, our second equation, we're gonna use this equation to help us derive the second equation. Okay, so you you guys should be, should be all familiar with this equation of acceleration. Acceleration equals delta v, the change in velocity, or the change in time. How fast it took to accelerate. How fast was the velocity changing? And we talked about this in the previous video. And you guys should know about this equation. So what can we do here? Well, we can change this top part, change in v, into something else. What is change in v equal to, actually? Whenever you have something, the change of something, what is it equal to? It is equal to the final of that something minus the initial of that something. Oops, not initial. I mean, you can write f and i, but I prefer to use it 1 and 2. It's easier to write in F. I don't know. Just preferences. So V2 minus V1, or in textbooks you can see um, VO, I mean V minus VO. It's all preference. So just know that 2 and 1 means final and, and initial, and you guys should be fine. So let's sub this back in. So what is it now? Equals, and we'll use a different color for this. Um, V2 minus v1 over change in t and now we can rearrange this so let's bring the t up okay a change in t equals what v2 minus v1 and what can we do here well we can rearrange this further and we can see that v2 final velocity equals v1 because we just bring it over or we are adding or we can say that we're adding both sides by v1 so add v1 to this side so we're adding v1 to this side and we're adding v1 to this side right and since v1 minus v1 is just zero so we can re rearrange this to become v1 plus a change in t and this is our second equation our second equation so now we have the first one and now we have the second one and for the rest of these, I mean, the first one was the only one where velocity had to be constant, where acceleration had to be zero. But for all of these, uh, next four, um, acceleration can be non-zero. Okay, so the third one. Now the third derivation, um, I'm going to use the, um, okay, I'm going to use this, the first one to derive the third one. So let, let me write down again what the, the first one was. Remember what we said, the first one was this. And I'm going to use a straight line to denote that the velocity is constant. The straight line means constant. So let me just write a quick note here that this means constant. Okay. So change d equals constant velocity times time. 
But what is constant velocity? What if you actually have a non-constant velo velocity? How can you actually use this, this equation? Now this is a little trick method to use, which is actually the third equation. Well, the average constant velocity, we can define it as the average or something. And when we have an average of two uh, objects, like one and then two, um, one object and then two object, how do we find the average of these? Like, let's say we have a number one and three, right? How do you find the average of this? Well, what you, what you do is you add them all up and then divide by the number of them, right? So same thing here. Let's say we have V1 and V2, right? How will we find the average um, of these two? Well, we add them all up. We add these both up and divide by the number of these two, which is just two. So we can sub this back in here because um, constant velocity, we can say it is like average velocity and average velocity is just the average of the two velocities, right? So let's put it back in. Change in D equals V1 plus V2 over two times the change in time. And this is our third equation our third equation. Okay, and two more to go. So we've got the first one, the second one, and the third one. Now the fourth one, um, we're going to use a graph of this to visualize what, what I mean. So let's say we have a graph of a velocity time graph. And I know that I haven't taught you guys of, um, about kinematics graph yet, graphs yet, but we'll, we will do so in, uh, in a future episode. But just for now, suffice it to say that um, just play along with me. I'm going to talk you through this. So this is a velocity time graph where time is on the x-axis and velocity is on the y-axis. So let's say um, an object starts at a velocity of v1. okay? And let's say he's accelerating at a constant acceleration because all of these equations only work. Remember, this is important. All of these equations only work when acceleration is constant. There cannot be a changing a change in acceleration or else these equations won't work. So let me just put down here acceleration is constant, right? So let's say and he ends up here and let's say this is oh oops this is a bit too far. It's out of my graph. Let's say here. Okay. Let's say and he ends up at V two. And we're trying to find displacement because the fourth one we're trying to find displacement right so how do you find displacement from a velocity time graph remember what um, the definition for displacement is it is actually vt right and we can say that the um, displacement how do you derive um, displacement from a velocity time graph and although I'll, I'm going to be teaching you later on um, I'm just going to tell you straight up that to find displacement, it's actually the area under a velocity time graph. So whatever the area is under a velocity time graph is the displacement that the object went through throughout this time period. So how do we find the area? Well, we can actually divide it into two parts, right? We can divide it into a triangle here and a rectangle here. So what is the area of this triangle? Well, a triangle's area is half times base times height. So what's base? Half times base is just, we can call this change in t, the change in time that it took. Oops, I shouldn't write change in t here, I just write t. So the time, the change in time times the height. And what's height? It's just v2 minus v1. And what's this one now? Well, the area for a rectangle is base times height, and base is time and height is just v1 minus 0, which is just v1. So let's bring it all together into this equation. So change in d equals, remember change in d is just the area on the graph. So change in d equals the sum of these two areas. So it will be change in t v1, which is the one from here, and plus the top one, which is half times change in t times v2 minus v1. Okay, now it looks a bit messy right now, so let's clean it, clean it up a bit. Now what we're going to deal with here is this part right here. Okay, this part right here. What does this part look like? Remember what we said in the, um, um, in the top part? 
V2 minus V1. I think I said it somewhere here. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay. Oh, right here. There we go. I found it. <laughs> so V2 minus V1 is the same thing as what? V2 minus V1 is the same thing as A ch times time. A times time, right? Because we, we, we're using the, the this equation to clean up this equation. So V2 minus V1 is the same thing as a times time because we bring the time up here. So V2 minus V1 equals A H and T. And let's sub this in. So let's rewrite this. Change in D equals V1. And I like to put V1 in front of the time. V1 change in T plus half. And I'm going to put um, this in front of that. So that's now what is this, Amber? What is this? Well, it's the same thing as A times time. So let's put in a times time, and then what? What do we have left? Times time again because this part. So it's half times v two minus v one, which is the same thing as a times time, times time again because of this one right here. So we can expand it, and what do we get? We get this equation because we're multiplying time times time, which is time squared. Times square. <laughs> anyway, okay, so this is our fourth equation. Right here. Displacement equals initial velocity times time plus half times the acceleration times the time square. Okay, the last equation. Okay, now for this equation it's a it's a combination of a lot of things. So I'm gonna tell you what I'm I'm gonna be using. So we are using we are using these equations, the I think this was the second, third one. I think. Let's let's check back. Equation number two. So we're using equation number two, and we're using equation number three, which is just remember the average velocity thing. Okay, so we're going to be using this for our derivation. Okay, so first off, let's rearrange this equation right here. So how can we rearrange this? Let's bring the v2 over to this side. I mean v1 over to this side. So we get v2 minus v1 equals a change in t. Now let's solve for t because we want to com to combine these two equations together. And we can see that, that the common variable here is the time, change in t. So let's solve for change in t. We divide both sides by a. Divide both sides by a. And what do we get? The a cancels out. So we get change in time equals v2 minus v1 over a. Now we can sub this into this equation. So we get change in d equals what? Change in d equals v1 plus v2 over 2. And what do we have here? Remember we sub we're subbing this in. So what do we have here? We have v2 minus v1 over a. Now let's expand this out. Okay, and this is where we need a little bit of math. This is where a bit of math kicks in. So, if you guys remember from math, um, what happens when you have this a plus b, a minus b, which is what we have here, a plus b, a minus a minus b. What happens when you expand this out? Well, we just get a squared minus b squared. And you know that this in the form right now, it's not really a plus b. So let me just rearrange it first. Let me just rearrange it to make it clearer to you how it all ties in. So I'm going to rewrite it as v2 now. I'm just I'm just switching these around. No harm done. I'm just switching these two around just to make it clear of what's actually happening. Oops. Okay. So now we can see that let's say v2 is a. So we have v2 here and we have v1 as b. So it's v2 plus v1 times v2 minus v1. So it's a plus b times a minus b. And we expand it out and we get a squared, a this is an a, a squared minus b squared. So what happens now? We get a squared, a is v2, oops, actually, equal sign, okay, there we go. So a is v2, so it's v2 squared minus b squared and b is v1 
so v1 squared all over the parts that are left out behind here because we didn't touch them at all to a oops for a vector hat to a and this is our very last equation okay this is equation number five so let's recap Oof, this that, that was a lot of math this this whole lesson too much math okay so our first equation was this the basic of all the equations the most basic equation of all um, changing d displacement equals f constant velocity times time and remember constant velocity is just is denoted by just a line on top so let's rewrite it down below let's like put a little chart let's say a chart of chart of equations okay so our first one was what was it change in d equals constant velocity remember the line means constant velocity times time that was our first one and our second one what was it our second one was this the the v2 we just it, it, was, it was just a rearrangement of the acceleration equation remember we had acceleration and we rearranged it to find this equation so let's write that down our second equation is v2 equals v1 plus a times time our third one what was our third one? Oh, I remember our third one was this one the it was using the first equation and finding the average of the two velocities so it's using the same equation but just that instead of constant velocity we have the average so v1 plus v2 over 2 times time and what was our fourth one? Our fourth one was the one with the graph, the one where, the one where we found the two areas and added them both together, and we got this. And I don't know why, but I this this like my favorite equation, and it's used so often. This this equation equation number four is the one that you, that you're probably going to use the most often. Throughout my experiences, this was the one that I used the most often. So, and equation number five was the a plus b a minus b thing a squared minus b squared thing so we got change in d equals v2 squared the b the a squared minus the b b squared v2 squared minus v1 squared over all over to a and these were our five equations and note that remember this one was a constant velocity and all these had a constant acceleration and this is important right here because if if acceleration wasn't constant these equations would not hold so it's important to know that we need this and we need this for these equations so that's basically it um, memorize these, these equations and you know just treat them like, like your friends these these equations will help you through your tough times through kinematics equations <laughs> the problems I, I mean so yeah um, next episode I will I guess I, I can go more in depth about how to use these equations and give, give some examples of, of how to use them so until next episode guys I'll see you then peace out